Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of the Bundesliga career mode. This is the 31st episode of the series. And we started today's episode by seeing that Tobias Strobel has agreed a contract with the French side FC Lorient and leaves us after just a few months for £4 million. Pounds. Now, of course, in the last episode, we also sold Andre Silva to Udinese for £16 million. Pounds. So together, we get £20 million pounds for these two players. In the last episode, we signed Maximilian Meyer for £11 million. Pounds, and I thought with a bit of money still left over, around £4 40 million pounds in a kitty. Why not try and sign a new player to come in? And I thought about getting a new right back. Now, Dennis Diekmeyer is totally fine playing in a right back role. Doesn't really do anything too noteworthy, but never really lets us down on too many occasions. But I wouldn't mind a new right back for the future because Diekmeyer looks like he's going to stay at 75 overall for the rest of his career. And I thought this guy would be a really good choice. Fabinho, who plays for Monaco, Brazilian right back. Of course, I can check his stats being a Brazil manager, even though he hasn't been fully scouted yet. He's valued at around £13.5 million. Pounds. We put in a straight valuation bid with Monaco and they said yes, that's totally fine. So just a few days before deadline day, we know we're going to make a new signing here. Fabinho could be coming to the Box Park Stadium. We offer him a contract, 60 grand a week on a five-year deal. He initially says no. He wasn't too keen on that because the wage was too low. So he said, all right, fair enough, fair enough. We'll give you the extra 10 grand a week. And as you'll see, Fabinho eventually says yes. So Fabinho is going to come in for 13 and a half million pounds. It's a new record signing for me here at Hamburg and I must admit I'm pretty happy with his signing as well because it's a valuation bid. He's 81 overall. He's 23 years old. He's going to have more potential. He will most likely grow and get even better. At least I hope so. Touch wood. We know we've got so many growth problems here at Hamburg. But he's a really, really good player. He can play right back. I played him at centre back last year in my one season challenge series when I used him for the first and only time so far and he was totally fine there. He's got some really good defensive stats and he can also play first forward in right midfield I suggest those stats too and I'm sure he'll be totally competent playing through the middle of the park as well as holding midfield is in his list of positions as well as having some decent passing stats as well so a very versatile right back I'm really happy with that signing 13 and a half million pounds is a lot our new record signing but I think he'll be totally fine he's not my favorite right back I've ever used but I'm sure he'll be totally fine but there's a question for you guys today who is your favorite right back in FIFA 16 my favorite right back would probably be Nathaniel Klein had him for Watford he was absolutely fantastic but a question for you guys who is your favorite right back in FIFA 16 let me know in the comment section down below but for the first of three games today we take on Herder Berlin here away at the Olympia Stadion coming on the back of that fantastic 3-0 victory against Bayer Leverkusen looking to make it three wins from three and close the gap to six points at the top of the table it's actually an important position in the modern game uh, full back and they've strengthened haven't they with this signing yeah and I think you're always looking for athleticism when you're looking at your full backs and this is a player that can get up and down all day and Fabinho would make his debut here away from home against Herder Berlin in the Olympia Stadion. And right now, this side in the game are struggling once again. Last season in the game, they only stayed up through winning their relegation playoff match. And this season, they're in the relegation zone once again, which is really surprising for me because Herder Berlin are a really decent side. A far cry from the team I built with them in FIFA 14, maybe. But in real life right now, they're in fourth place in the Bundesliga. And I don't think they've won any of their last two or possibly three games but they're still doing very well and as things stand on course to finish in a Champions League qualifying place so kind of bizarre how for two consecutive seasons in the game they will be struggling so much but as you take a one here away at the Olympia Stadion first chance fell to us just before the half time break Kraft made a good save and Angel Correa smacked the post there as Fabinho almost got himself a debut assist with a good cross into the centre but the Argentine couldn't convert as his uh, shot hit the woodwork and went behind for a goal kick so still nil nil in the 64th minute though Luan comes off the bench and goes down left hand side beats his man Mitchell Weiser and gets inside I try to advance Rainbow over Lustenberg it didn't really work out too well but he got it over him his shot was well saved by Kraft but coming in was Chorentin Tolisso who scores his first goal of the season I think as well possibly his first goal for the club as well we signed him last season from Leon in the January trans window on deadline day and that was his first touch I do believe since coming off the bench as well and it was to head in the rebound after Kraft made a good save he came over the back of Stendera won the header and put it into the empty net and made it 1-0 to the away side. So we take the lead with 23 minutes to go. Tolisso with the goal. Delighted with that as we go in search of three consecutive wins. But unfortunately for us in the 80th minute, right on that 80th minute mark, Herder would get themselves back on level terms. And the guy that scored was Zoltan Stieber or Stieber and we sold him to Herder Berlin in the summer transfer window. Last season he was out on loan. He came back this season but I didn't have any plans for him so 
So I just told him his services weren't required. I put him on the transfer list. Heard of Berlin came in and he scores his second goal of the season. And this one comes against us. Fitting, isn't it? So he gets the goal. He makes it 1-1. And unfortunately, Herder do deny us of a victory here. And our third in a row. But that goal was my fault, though. I've got to hold my hands up for that one. When the ball was played through, I tried to pass out from the back all the time, as you guys know. And I barely ever pressed the circle button to clear the ball. And I usually try and play it forward as well. Not play it back to the goalkeeper, but play it forward. And I tried to give it towards Fabinho, I think it was. And with Hoffman, he was on the turn. He was never going to pass the ball accurately. And of course he didn't. And Herder intercepted and went to, on to score. So the final score was 1-1, but the goal was my fault. I gave the ball away cheaply. And Herder grabbed themselves the equalising goal from that and claimed a point. So very disappointed with that, but I've got to hold my hands up and admit I made the mistake, which I did. But uh, following that, it was time for a transfer deadline day. And as you can see, we had a bid here for Hoffman. We said no, though, because Hoff is fantastic. One of the best centre-backs I've used in this year's game. So he's staying here. And also a bid for Werner as well from Udinese. And once again, we said no, because these two players are really important to us and we have no plans of selling them whatsoever. So transfer deadline day was going to be a pretty quiet one, to be honest. This January transfer window in general was set to be a pretty quiet one. You know, I wasn't aiming to sign or sell any of my players, but once Udinese matched a bid for Andre Silva, that's when I decided that we may as well try and replace those players and spend our money, because before that, we didn't really have any money. We had about eight to nine million pounds. So, okay, we had a little bit, but as we're a side that's getting bigger and bigger, we're not really going to be able to sign too many good players for the first team with that amount of money. But after the sales of, again, Andre Silva and Tobias Strobel for 20 million pounds, that allowed us to spend the money on Maximilian Maya and Fabinho. And I have to say, I'm pretty happy with the business we did in this January transfer window. Again, it was supposed to be a pretty quiet one. I was supposed to whiz through this window and not really worry about it too much. But instead, we sign a couple of players, we sell a couple of players. And I would definitely say I've made some really, really smart signings right there. Because Fabinho is going to go right into the first team, as is Maximilian Maya. And Tobias Strobel was our fourth choice centre-back. And Andre Silva was a backup striker who, before getting sold, had only played eight games for us and scored one goal. So, yeah, I might be being a little bit biased here and I'm totally willing to admit that. But I definitely feel as though the business we did over this January transfer window has been really, really good. Selling two players who we weren't really using for £20 million and then signing two for £24.5 million who we will use and should be a lot better, I think, are really, really good deals. So I'm happy with the business we did. And as you can see, the score report right here as we entered February. Um, you know, I'm still pretty frustrated about the growth problems, I'll be honest. I've mentioned it a couple of times and I'll mention it again. There are some players who, quite frankly, just refuse to grow and I don't have an answer as to why that seems to be the case. Jonathan Tarr, for example, came in in the summer and he's been fantastic alongside Hoffman in the centre-back role. And, you know, we've only conceded nine goals in the Bundesliga in 19 games. That is the best record by six. Uh, is that right? Yeah, six against Bayern Munich who have only conceded 15 goals. Goals. Yet Jonathan Tarr is still yet to go up in any ratings, only growing in the mentals. And, you know, Hoffman, his growth throughout this entire series so far has only been through training. Not a single natural rating has gone up. And, you know, it's, it's pretty frustrating. Werner only got up by one rating. Sane's only grown one outside of the training. It's pretty frustrating. But hopefully, touch wood, the, um, that uh, Maya and Fabinho won't have those growth problems and they'll be totally fine. But still, following that, look at the league table as well. Right now, we are eight points behind Bayern Munich with 15. 15 games to go. They are still undefeated as they lead the way in the league table right now. And also you saw our Champions League round of 16 draw as well. Of course, it is against Barcelona. That leg will be coming. The first leg will be coming in the next episode as well. Look forward to that. And I read the comments too a couple of episodes ago and I asked you guys to tell me who you thought would be going through between Barcelona and Hamburg. Would we, would we be able to upset the odds? I wasn't very confident. And a lot of you guys seem pretty confident in my ability. A lot of you guys have faith in my ability. You're saying you would get through it on away goals or sneak it by a goal or maybe two goals as well. Quite a lot of you guys seem to suggest that you believe I can upset the odds and we can beat Barcelona and knock them out in around the 16th stage. So thanks for the faith, thanks for the optimism, but I don't really have much myself and I'm really looking for. I'm really, I'm not really looking forward. I'm not really looking forward, really. I'm not looking forward to the two legs against Barcelona. But we'll have to wait and see. Maybe I can upset the odds and we will indeed be able to progress to the quarterfinals of the Champions League. The first leg will, of course, be coming in the next episode alongside a game against Borussia Dortmund. So how about about that. But either way, for the second of three games in today's episode here, taking on Eintracht Frankfurt back at the Vox Park Stadion on the back of that disappointing draw against Herder Berlin. Had to put it right in this game. Valencia had to make a, good, a couple of good saves in the first half though, but in the second half we would open the scoring through a familiar face. Angel Correa getting on the end of this Brandt cross, which was flicked on by Lewis Holtby, and he was unmarked at a far post as 
as well. And I mean, for goodness sake, on track Frankfurt, I shouldn't have to tell you this, but if you're going to leave a player unmarked, don't let it be Angel Correa. He's the top scorer for Hamburg and he's the top scorer in the Bundesliga. He's now got his 14th goal and it is Hamburg going on track Frankfurt nil. So terrible marking in the centre. Correa with a very easy finish and from that range, he was never going to miss. And it was also how the game would finish as well. Hamburg won Eintracht Frankfurt nil, And they must have been furious with themselves after the game as well. Because for the most part, they defended very well in that game. They didn't really allow us too many chances at all. And there was just one momentary lapse of concentration. They just switched off for a second when that Brandt cross came in. Holtby flicked it on. They left Correa unmarked. And again, if you're going to leave one player in this Hamburg side unmarked, you can't let it be Angel Correa. So 1-0 the final score. We get back to winning ways after that draw against Herder Berlin. Now four games undefeated as well, or is it five games undefeated? I think thinking about it, been playing very well regardless right now in the Bundesliga, looking pretty strong and definitely, you know, still in this title race. I mean, you saw the league table, you know, being eight points behind Bayern going into that game, we were feeling a little bit sorry for ourselves. We just haven't been, you know, haven't been doing enough really to catch up with them so far. And of course, with them not slipping up, it means that every time we do slip up, like in those games against Herder, they gain even more ground on us. But I refuse to give up in this title race. I definitely still feel as though we can catch up to them if we keep on getting the wins. Our home form, of course, is still going to be extremely important, and that was a really, really impressive, well, not an impressive win, but a really important win for us as we got the win by a goal to nil. And so for our third game here, taking on Stuttgart away from home, first half was nil-nil once again, so still goalless going into the break. And this was a game where really not much was going on at all. There were only a couple of chances in the first half. And in the second half, in the 69th minute here, Stuttgart had a rare chance for them as our former striker, Shiplock, bullies his way past Jonathan Tarr, rolls it across towards Didavai, who was denied by a great save by Valente, and then Masuaku had to head it away as well before it was about to cross the line. So still nil-nil in this game. It was looking certain that the game was going to finish goalless. One of the final chances would fall here with 11 minutes to go. Stendera off the bench finds Correa, who gives it back to him. He then picks out Werner, also off the bench, who takes it around Rüdiger, rides the slide challenge, goes for goal, and wouldn't you just know it, with 10 minutes to go, Timo Werner comes off the bench to score against his former club at his former ground to keep us alive in the title race with a massive, massive game-winning goal. So in the first game of the episode, you saw Stieber score against us. Of course, him being our former player, we sold him to Herder Berlin at the start of the season. We brought Werner at the start of last season, one of our first signings in this Hamburg side. He's now been pushed onto the bench after the signing of Maximilian Meyer. He's gone into the attacker midfield role. Of course, Brandt has gone into the left midfield role where Werner usually used to play. Now he's on the bench, but he comes off the bench. He says, boss, don't forget about me. I can still be an important player. I can still win your games. And he did for this one as well by scoring the match winner with 10 minutes to go. And talk about fitting as well. Doing it against his former club, away at his former ground, keeping us in the title race with that late goal. And yes, I did see the deflection. That is a big reason as to why it found the back of the net. So we got a little bit lucky there with that deflection, but they all count. All the goals count. And that one certainly did. So Stuttgart nil, Hamburg won. I felt we deserved to win the game, but it was quite a slow paced one. Not too much going in for the, going on for the most part, but Timo Werner wins us the game and that was absolutely fantastic to see as we remain in this title race and with uh, 13 games to go, we are six points behind the league leaders by Munich. But that is going to end today's episode of the Bundesliga career mode, guys. So a big thank you for watching the video. Really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed today's episode, then please do consider leaving a like. That is, of course, much appreciated. It really helps the channel grow as well. You don't have to leave a like if you don't want to. Much love to you all and I'll see you for the next episode of the Bundesliga career mode very soon.